My name's Hamish Miller. I'm a blacksmith, a, a metal sculptor, author, dowser. I've been writing books now for something like 20 years, and it's covered a, a, a great deal of the field of dowsing and, and uh, earth energy. This is one of my favorite places. This is uh, Boscomenon. It's very special. It's uh, probably about three or 4,000 years old. The energy here is very, very interesting indeed. These sort of circles have a wonderful balance of energies that um, are conducive to a total relaxation. What happens is that we go in sometimes and our, our energy bodies are buzzing and uh, responding to things that have happened over breakfast or telephone calls or things like that. And we sit down here and the, the balanced energy is actually just, just uh, once you find your spot and you start relaxing, the energies here are just, just quietly uh, smooth all the jagged bits out. These places are very often associated with ley lines. There's a massive difference between uh, ley lines and energy lines. Because ley lines actually are, are theoretical straight lines that you, you find on the map. Sometimes the ley lines mark the flow of major earth energy lines and they meet at places which are very sacred, places like this. A ley line technically is, is a straight alignment of three or four sacred or very special sites. Now, I think originally they were, they were made with a combination of the energy points and the people being aware of the energy points and transferring their thoughts. And they go absolutely straight to the next energy center. In fact, the, the, some of the ancient people could communicate with each other along these energy lines. And the more they used them, the stronger they got. And of course, the old people were very sensitive to these very subtle energies and they liked to mark these places. And what better way to mark a place for 5,000 years than, than taking the trouble to put these massive stones in because nobody wants to shift these. <laughs> so they were very, very important to them, obviously. And then, of course, when they, the various different churches came along, they would recognize the importance of that site as a sacred site. And they superimposed their, their version of religion on top of the old ones because they knew it was a very special meeting point. So earth energy profoundly affects human behavior. And if you come in here not understanding it, uh, it just doesn't switch on and very little happens. But if you come in and understand a little bit about the, the way its energy works and how it responds to the moon and the sun and the planets and, and your own moon, in fact, you can be comfortable or uncomfortable or angry or frustrated or fearsome or whatever, it will actually switch on and, and it will affect your consciousness. You can be deeply moved by things that happen. Scientists have gone inside. Um, they've checked the energy inside the circle as opposed to the energy outside the circle and it is measurably different. So it does exist, there's no question it does exist. Earth energy is the equivalent of our nervous system and our meridian system put together. It's very complex, it's like a vast cobweb all over the world. The old people here knew a lot more about it than we, than we know it now. And they actually knew it was important because they were, they were more sensitive actually to variations in these very, very um, subtle energies and they knew that these subtle energies affected their behavior. We all have very, very subtle energy bodies around us, and not only one, we have seven or eight major ones and lots of other minor ones. Now these very subtle energies are affected by the energies of the Earth. And being subject to these since the beginning of time, we have grown into what we are because of the effect the energy had on us. It doesn't just apply to, to stone circles, of course, it, it applies to houses. And there are houses, and I'm sure you've all been into to houses where you think, well, I don't like this. And your rational mind actually makes a reason for not liking it. You might say it's, it's dark or it's got a brown colored wall or something. It makes a logical reason for the dislike. On the other hand, you walk into another place and you think, ooh, this is nice. And it might have a purple wall, but it doesn't matter because the energy is right and you respond to it and this feels good. And there are lots and lots of houses, and particularly in, in Cornwall down here, where people are living in the house, but they can't go into a particular room. And we do a lot of work that way, and, and just adjusting the frequency of the energy in the room so they're, they're, it's compatible with them and they're not uncomfortable. And there are millions of these energy lines. They've all got different frequencies. The Mary line, for instance, from, from Carnley Bull, comes in here through this, through this stone beside us here and goes to the center and turns at something like 20 degrees when she gets to that 
sloping stone. Now, I don't know whether the sloping stone was put there to mark the turn or that the Mary came in there and they wanted to turn it and they put the stone in to turn it <laughs> because they had a knowledge of, of the use of earth energy that uh, we don't begin to understand now. We shouldn't really call it earth energy because that's, that's a bit of a misnomer, although the effects of the earth energy are quite profound on us, but they are in fact cosmic energy points where there is a connection between the earth and the cosmos. Everybody is capable of tuning in without any uh, artificial aids at all because everybody has a different frequency, every heard a different balance, everybody has a different perception of, of their relation to the earth and the cosmos. And you will find it quietly on your own in a place like this. There are, I think, 400 sacred sites in the West Penwith in Cornwall. I've been living here for 25 years. I don't know half of them. But it's magical to go out on the map and find them. You know, stones, little stone circles or cromlechs or whatever, but big standing stones. The standing stones are there for a good reason. And to go and make your own discoveries is wonderful, but you must go with an open mind. You must, you, you must actually accept, and it's perfectly logical to accept now, particularly now that the scientists have proved that it does exist. Just accept that it's there and go with a sense of wonder into a place like this and just feel the very, very subtle effects on your own, your own being. Just quietly tune in to the sight and to the energy, recognize it's there, and then just sit and contemplate. The inducement to, to have a really deep med meditation is, is profound. And, and a deep connection with the whole of the cosmos. These are the places to be. All around we are, we are subject to mind chatter and it's very, very difficult to still it and just, and the whole idea of meditation is, is to, to get rid of the junk that's floating around and the things that you must do and mustn't do and, and, and just get you into a state of relaxation, pure relaxation. And only in that state can you start tuning into the real subtle energies that are the reward of chilling into the earth. But you don't have to do a, a, what I call a po-faced meditation or a very deliberate and, uh, and all that sort of thing. Meditation is about relaxing. And the, the, the act of relaxing is, is made much more easy, if you like, if you just sit in one of these places where you feel comfortable. You will actually access something just by being there and just be and listen and chill in.